This tutorial will demonstrate how to use the basic paintbrush in Blacksmith 3D Paint. It assumes that your object already has a texture applied to it and has good UV mapping. If not, please use the Paint Setup Wizard to quickly auto UV map your object and apply a texture. You will see that painting a Blacksmith 3D Paint feels like a 2D paint application with smooth continuous brush strokes, a familiar interface layout, and easy viewport navigation. With the ability to paint across UV seams, and auto UV map objects, you can focus on the creative side of texture painting without getting bogged down with the technical details associated with texturing. And of course, you are free to paint on objects that have been UV mapped using the traditional methods. Let us now demonstrate the basic paintbrush that is found in the left toolbar. Navigate the viewport to align the model as desired, choose the paintbrush, and simply start painting on the model. Notice the smooth flow of the paint stroke, especially if you're using a pressure-sensitive drawing tablet. The color box located at the bottom left-hand corner of the window allows you to choose the primary and secondary colors. For the basic paintbrush, we're only interested in the primary color, so let us set it to red. Now notice the various settings in the tool window for the brush. Let us take a closer look at what they do. The size of the brush determines how large it will appear relative to the dimensions of the viewport, and not in number of pixels. We see here that it has a default value of 10%. Now let us do a brush stroke with 10%, and now set it to 5. Now we'll up it to 20%, and finally to 50%. This is all pretty easy and fairly obvious. The strength parameter determines how much paint will be applied in a single brush stroke. Given a lower value, say 40%, yields in a watercolor like effect, which will build up with multiple brush strokes. Let us now consider the hardness parameter. When it is set to 0%, then the edge of the brush stroke blends softly with the texture beneath, as you can see here. When it is set to 50%, there's some blending, but not so much. And finally, when we set it to 100%, there is no blending between the brush stroke and the underlying texture. The next parameter to consider is spacing. This will determine the space between each impression of the brush shape along the path of the brush stroke. Let us start off by setting the spacing at 100% and applying a brush stroke. Now notice how each impression of the brush shape is very distinct. Now let us set it to 50%. Notice they're closer together yet still distinct. Now let us enter the default value of 20% and notice how smooth they are together and it's not no longer noticeable. And the absolute minimum value of 1% packs each impression of the brush shape tightly yielding the smoothest possible brush stroke. The final parameter for this brush is density. Lowering the value to less than 100% yields an airbrush-like effect. Again, we'll apply three brush strokes to illustrate the point. Set the density to 20% and apply a brush stroke. Then to 70. And finally to 90%. Again, this is a standard feature found in most 2D paint applications, which should be familiar to you. In addition to painting with solid colors, Blacksmith 3D Paint allows you to paint with brush images. You can select the brush image from the library, or by simply dragging and dropping the file into the texture box. Now simply apply a paint stroke, and notice how the brush image is used to texture the object. By default, the texture is mapped to the plane of the viewport. However, please note that by clicking on the Setup button in the Texture Options window, additional wrapping options are available. By pressing the V hotkey, you will see the texture tiled across the entire object. This allows you to visualize exactly how the textures will appear after the brush stroke. Now apply a brush stroke 
and see how the texture comes through. Now you may also turn off the Tile Brush Texture option to stamp an impression of the image inside the bounds of the brush shape. This concludes our basic painting tutorial. The parameters of this basic paintbrush are common to most of the advanced brushes, such as the clone brush and the touch-up brush, so the upcoming sections will exclusively focus on their unique features. Also, please be sure to watch the tutorials that discuss culling, fade by angle, and mirror and symmetry.